Okay, thank you everybody for joining us. I appreciate you being here. Uh, let's open up with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this evening. We thank you that we can come together uh, using incredible technology, Father. And Lord, I just ask that you would uh, open up our ears and our hearts to hear what you would have to say tonight. We just give all this to you. We just glorify you in this. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. I want to thank everybody for joining. Um, you know, appreciate it, uh, everybody being here. We've got a good turnout tonight. And, um, I, you know, please feel free to ask questions. I, I kind of multitask. I'm a little ADD, so it really helps because I'll watch the chat box and I will teach and I'll go on rabbit trails and all kinds of stuff. So uh, there are some advantages to being a little ADD. But I want to just say hello to everybody, and I've got some first-time people here. I know Janice, this is your first time. Denny, this may be your first time. Welcome. We appreciate all of you being here. Um, so what I want to talk about is it's a, it's a tough one. It's a tough topic, and uh, I'm just going to talk to you about it openly and honestly. Uh, toxic relationships, and we're going to define them, discuss them, uh, maybe come up with some answers, and hopefully help you. Um, first off, you know, what is a toxic relationship? What are we talking about? Um, you know, what, well, how would we describe it? And this is what I would describe as a toxic relationship. I would use the following definition. A toxic relationship is a relationship that causes emotional, spiritual, psychological, or physical harm. Um, Relationships can are, are very important to us, and we, we, we were created for relationships. And so relationships can be an incredible blessing, and they can be incredibly painful. And unfortunately, in our life, there's people that do affect us adversely, okay? Um, I, I'll just tell you from my heart, one of the things that I used to hate, um, if you ever heard the expression, well, they only treat you that way because you allow it, to me, that, that's a lie. You know, I, people act the way they act, not because I allow it. People act the way they act because that's the way they choose to act, okay? Has nothing to do with me allowing it or not allowing it. So I don't take responsibility for other people's actions. And people are not toxic to me because I allow it. There's just some people that affect me in adverse ways. Uh, ways and sometimes it's actually my issues and, and it's my problem because I, I'm not setting healthy boundaries okay now so hear me now I don't want to label people as toxic and bring condemnation there can be certain people in your life that are actually pretty healthy but they affect you in adverse ways because possibly of triggers or wounds you have from the past there are people who may have certain personality traits which tend to be toxic for you, even though overall this person is, they're not a bad person, they're not an unhealthy person. Uh, matter of fact, in other relationships they may do really well, but to you they're toxic. It's kind of like food, you know, there's some people are allergic to milk, some people are allergic to cheese. Well, I love milk and I love cheese, but to other people it's, it's really bad. Well, sometimes that's the way it is with folks. There's some people that seem to have an adverse effect on us, and maybe not they may not have an adverse effect on other people. Other people may think they're wonderful, okay? So I'm trying to show a little, little mercy here, and let's be balanced and fair about this, okay? Um, God created us for relationship. I mean, we were created. This is why relationships are so important, and it's such a huge topic. And it has such an impact upon our life. Genesis 2.18 says, Then the Lord said, It's not good for man to be alone. Let's just stop right there. It's not good for us to be alone. Amen? I mean, it's just not good. We are social beings. It's not good to be isolated. It's not good to, be, to live in a cave by yourself. Okay? And of course, God had an answer for that. He made uh, Adam a helper. But the statement, the original statement was still true today. It's not good for people to be alone. Then Jesus says, I give you a new commandment, a new commandment I give to you that you love one another. Even as I have loved you, you also love one another. So what you see in this right here, love one another, okay? Relationship. Love, and then he, he repeats it right here. He says, love one another. Jesus wanted us to have relationships. 
and he wanted us to love people in that relationship and let me let me state something too now you know love biblical love that the Lord is talking about there it's not a feeling I mean love does create emotions but when Jesus says love one another you can love someone that you don't even like and you say well how do you do that you love them by showing them respect you show them courtesy you show them kindness you treat them the way you would have them treat you okay you know the golden rule so to speak in other words you can demonstrate love to people even people that you don't agree with or don't like as a matter of fact it's very easy to love people you're in agreement with the challenge for a mature Christian is can you love the unlovable can you love the difficult people okay that that to me separates excuse the expression but separates the men from the boys but in bottom line is we were created for relationships so if we're made for relationships then since we're created for relationships and that is the will of God it's no surprise that Satan continually attacks in the area of relationships I would just if I were to take a poll right now everybody listening to me I bet you 100% of you would tell me you have had pain in relationships you've been hurt by a relationship uh, you may have been devastated by a relationship or issues in a relationship or a problem I, I think to me one thing that I have realized about the devil the Bible says we should not be unaware of his schemes is this Satan does not ever attack God directly Satan always attacks God indirectly now the way Satan opposes God is by attacking God's purpose God's will God's plans working through us and one of God's plans is for us to have healthy relationships therefore since Satan cannot go directly against God he comes against God indirectly by attacking us especially in the area of relationships okay all right uh, we got a little comment here from Steve one of the most effective ways to understand that love is a choice considering uh, that Jesus teaches love your enemy if love were nothing more than a feeling no one would love their enemy and that's true it's interesting Jesus does not give us an escape at all he says love your neighbors he says love your friends he says love your enemy love your spouse in other words it's kind of a blanket deal <laughs> okay and again I can love someone that I don't like simply by showing them courtesy even though I don't agree with them okay that's the way I can show them love it's more it's more than a feeling I think there's an old song about that more than a feeling relationships can be the source of great joy and fulfillment and also the cause of enormous pain the most painful events in my life have not been physical and I've had some physical pain uh, I've broken my feet four different times in, in sports four different bone breaks and that that really really hurt okay uh, just a few weeks ago actually about a month ago I was diagnosed with a degenerated disc in my back which miraculously is doing a whole lot better that was very painful but I've had breakups in relationships that just about killed me and I'm just I'm honest I'm transparent I've been through a divorce and the divorce was like death it was worse than death I cannot I can't even tell you how painful it was and I know you guys can relate to this so relationships can be very painful and toxic people can contribute to that pain or let me I want to I'm kind of convicted about this I don't want to label people as toxic I will just say some people are toxic to me some people are toxic to you and again this person who's toxic for to you may not be toxic to another person okay so what causes a toxic relationship I love those graphics <laughs> well anybody feel like you need those gas masks what causes a toxic relationship and, and this is my view on it okay and if you have comments or you know what you, what you think about it just you know feel free um, my view is this the leading cause is when two unhealthy people find themselves drawn together okay um, 
usually there, there's some measure of unhealthiness in a toxic relationship. Now, for example, you can't bear with me here. For example, one unhealthy person may be looking for a victim they can control. This can be the abusive person, okay? And they're looking. I mean, they're actually, they're, they're predators. Um, and, and they're looking for people that they can uh, control, that they can dominate. And usually there's, there's, and we'll talk about that in a second, there's reasons for that. Another person, another unhealthy person will be attacked, or should be attracted to, that's a bad word there. Let me, um, let me mark that word out. So this is scratch that word. They should be, they will be attracted to a person they believe can be rescued or fixed. Okay. But when you have two unhealthy people, or it could just be one unhealthy person in a relationship, you've got, you've got something that could be toxic. And I'll, again, when I say toxic relationships, when you're in a painful relationship, sometimes it literally is like drinking poison. When I say poison for the soul, it affects your body. It affects your nervous system. It can affect your digestive system. Uh, it, it can affect your, your, your musculatory system. It can affect your heart rate, blood pressure. It can have an effect not only on your emotions, but it literally does. These relationships and the stress they cause and the mental anguish well, can affect every cell in your body. Even these uh, toxic relationships, to me, can even lead to disease. Okay, um, you know the, the the Bible in Psalms, David talked about a, a broken spirit and how dries up the a broken heart dries up the bones. So unhealthy things can have unhealthy relationships can have a lot of ramifications. We can. Uh, the root cause will always be related to the issue of low self-esteem. Now, this is a really, really, really big deal here. People with healthy self-esteem or the self-esteem that God has given them normally do not have problems with unhealthy relationships, dysfunctional relationships, abusive relationships, or toxic relationships. When our self-esteem is healthy enough, okay, we are not drawn to that type of person, okay? Or if we do get around that person, we can set boundaries very easily. Now, I'm not condemning anybody. I've had my share of unhealthy relationships. Now, there's no condemnation, but as counselors, the way you solve a toxic relationship is you don't try to fix the person who's toxic. The per you, what you work, you work with the person in front of you and you try to build their self-esteem. Um, for instance, if, if I'm counseling a woman who's in an abusive relationship, the first thing we do is we work on her belief systems. We build her up. We try to get her healthy because when your self-esteem increases and you start feeling better about yourself and you start getting emotionally and physically and spiritually healthy, at that point, you can make healthy decisions. But until your self-esteem has been built up and you've been built up, you cannot make a healthy decision about a toxic relationship. So if you're counseling someone who's in a toxic relationship, never, ever, ever, ever fall into the trap of trying to counsel the person who's not in your office. All you can ever do is you counsel the person who's in front of you. Um, some years ago, I had a, a, a lady come into my office and she said, I'm concerned about my daughter. My daughter doesn't invite me over for Christmas. My daughter doesn't call me. My daughter doesn't send me presents. My daughter doesn't do this. My daughter doesn't do that. And she went on and on and on about her daughter. What am I going to do about my daughter? And, and I wasn't trying to be smart aleck, but I said, nothing. Let's talk about you, what we can do about you. No, 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 no. I want to talk about my daughter, what we're going to do with my daughter. I said, well, your daughter's not here right now. I don't think we're going to fix your daughter or change your daughter, but we can help you. We can help you in the way you react. We can help you to make healthier choices. We can help you set better boundaries. We can help you feel good about yourself despite your daughter. But she didn't want to hear that. She wanted me to tell her how to change another person. That is very common. 
And in toxic relationships, you're not going to change the other person. Okay? Work on yourself. Get the log out of your own eye. Okay? We, we're not called to change other people. We're called to serve other people. We're called to serve them, to love them. But fix them, change them, no. That's God's job, and that's their job. Amen? Yeah, uh, Jim and Marcia say self-esteem, who God says we are. That's true. That's, that's true. You know, if you just really are struggling with low self-esteem, you, there's 230 verses in the Bible that say incredible things about us. If you really want to feel good about yourself, read what I call the I Am Scriptures. I've got copies of them. If you email me, I'll send you a copy of the I Am's. You know, God says we are joint heirs with Jesus Christ. We are children of God. We are members of the royal priesthood. We are above and not beneath. We're the head and we're not the tail. He says we're saints. He says we're saved. He, he says we have dominion. He, he says we're adopted. I mean, he, he says incredible things about us. And, you know, if you want to feel good, just, just believe what God says. Amen? But self-esteem is the root cause. Somewhere, when you have a toxic relationship, you will find some issues of self-esteem floating around there somewhere. Okay. A person with low self-esteem will make relationship choices in line with their personal identity beliefs. Um, I did this when I was younger. I didn't feel good about myself. I didn't feel worthy. I did not feel as like I measured up to other people. I didn't feel as acceptable as other people. And I found myself drawn and attracted to unhealthy people. Um, and the reason I was so comfortable with unhealthy people was because I was unhealthy. And I didn't feel good about myself. And I remember being around some really quality people that were very healthy and very loving and um, very kind. And I was not comfortable around them. You put me around a dysfunctional person, I was very happy. Okay? So I was a setup for toxic relationships. So your self-esteem will affect your choices. Amen? When a person has a distorted view of themselves, many times they'll be drawn into dysfunctional relationships, and that was me. Um, my view was distorted of myself. I did not feel that I measured up to other people. Therefore, um, I was just comfortable, drawn, attracted to dysfunctional people. Now, I'm not saying we should not be around dysfunctional, unhealthy people. I mean, we're called to love everyone. Amen. But to have a close relationship, to have that friendship, that the bond, you really need people who are more in line with the will of God for your life. And we're going to talk about this in a few slides. All right, so a distorted view will cause a distorted relationship. Toxic relationship causes misery, but the person is unable to escape. And this is what, when your esteem is low, and you're in a toxic relationship, escape seems to be impossible. And people around you are going, why do you hang out with that person? Why are you still involved with that person? Why don't you leave this person alone? Why don't you get out of that relationship? But you see, with low self-esteem, there's a lot of fear involved, and escape can be extremely difficult. And of course, there's some toxic people you cannot escape from. We'll talk about that. You see, a toxic relationship creates a uh, many lies that keep the prison door locked. Now, what, what are the lies? Okay, toxic relationships create lies. What do I mean by that? Here's typical lies that come from a toxic relationship. You'll not be able to make it without the other person. No one else will ever love or truly accept you. You're not worthy of anything better. The other person's behavior is somehow, it's your fault. If you could just do better, then they would not be this way. It's better to stay in a relationship because change is too scary. And it's amazing, you know, Satan is the father of lies. And whenever there is a toxic situation, the devil will come in with all his demons. The devil always attacks in vulnerable places. And he comes in with all his demons and he starts lying. And everything on that slide is a lie. It is a complete lie. But these lies tend to be believed. I want to tell you something. The Bible says faith comes by hearing. 
and hearing by the word of Christ or the word of God, depending on which version you're reading. But faith comes by hearing. And I've said this many times. Faith comes by hearing, which means if you hear a lie enough, you'll tend to believe it. If you hear the truth enough, you'll tend to believe that as well. Well, when you hear something over and over again, you tend to believe it. Being in dysfunctional relationships and crazy relationships make you feel crazy. Being around crazy people makes you feel crazy. It is somehow it disrubs off on you, okay? Being around healthy people makes you feel healthier, okay? But the lies we have to, the way you conquer a lie is with the truth. And guys, we need a ton of truth. This is why the Word of God and, and, and confirmation, affirmations, we need you. We all need to be around people who say, you're amazing. Jim Drake, you're an amazing guy. You have an incredible prophetic gift. You have an incredible heart. You're full of kindness. You're full of wisdom. I mean, you're just an amazing guy. If you never did anything else in your life, you'd be a success. You know, you know and that's the truth. And we need that. We need that. You know, you know, Mindy, you, you have such, you're such a wise person. You have so much knowledge, but you're just, you're just a good, you're a good person. You've been through a lot. And the point is, we need this. We need the encouragement. We need to hear the truth. We all need to be built up. You know, I, I flow in a prophetic gift, but the, the key, the main reason for the prophetic gift is to edify us. Is to edify. Edify means to build up. And I'll tell you what, if you're a Christian and you're anointed, you've been torn down. You've been attacked. You've been hammered. You've probably been abused. You probably have been sexually abused, physically abused, emotionally abused. Satan targets children of God from the womb. Okay? You are a target. I'm sorry, but that's the way it is. And you've been lied to and lied to and lied to and lied to. And we need to hear the truth, the truth, the truth, the truth, the truth. We need large doses of wonderful God's truth. All of us need that, okay? Amen. Amen. Hello, Lynn Clemens. Yeah. Yeah. Ron, Ron John said he hates the devil more than he hates me. You must hate him a lot. <laughs> that is true. That That's Ron John. This is a little something, if you can read this kind of small print, I, I found that I thought was really good from a man named Michael Josephson. It says, toxic relationships not only make us unhappy, they corrupt our attitudes and our dispositions in ways that undermine healthier relationships and prevent us from realizing how much better things can be. That's a mouthful there. But toxic relationships can undermine our life. They can undermine even how we react to healthy people. When you're in a toxic relationship, there's a lot of focus on the problem. There's a lot of focus on the toxic person. And the problem with that is, and we'll talk about this in a minute, but whatever you whatever you focus on tends to control you. And guess who wants your focus? The devil wants your focus, but God also wants your focus. And God is a jealous God. Okay? All right. Any other comments? When it is possible, cutting contact with toxic people can transform your life. Now, at first, it is, it's very hard. Uh, there are doubts and there are questions. You may waver back and forth. That's why I put the little guy with question marks there. It can be a little confusing sometimes. But as your healthy boundaries are established, you begin to feel better about yourself every day. So it, it's not easy, and this is why we need the encouragement. We need help. We need, uh, we need God's help. We need the help of godly people, and counselors, and godly pastors. We need support. Okay, we need each other. Now I want to say something here um, about non-toxic. Jesus, and this is one of my favorite scriptures. Jesus spoke about healthy relationships. See, your true friends, non-toxic friends, are people who understand and support who you were created to be and encourage the will of God for your life. Let me say this again. Your true friends or your best friends or your healthy friends, these people, they understand you. 
they support you and they support who you were created to be and they encourage God's plan for you okay Jesus you know one of the famous stories and I love this story and I, I talk about it a lot but it just it just changed my life when I got this there's a situation or story in, in Mark 3 where Jesus was ministering in a home it was very crowded and there was a knock on the door and they said Lord your mother and brother is, are outside and then Jesus here he goes he answered them and he said who are my mother and my brothers looking about those who were sitting around him he said behold my mother and my brothers whoever does the will of God he is my brother and sister and mother. So what he's saying is here, he said, look, my family, my real family are those people who do the will of God and they're in the will of God for me, okay? You understand? I, I've got family that do not support me. I've got family up in Tennessee that have never supported me. I've got family Today, if you ask them what I do, they couldn't even tell you. And that's very painful for me. That, that, that hurts because I want my family to be involved and I love my family. But you know what? God sent other family to me. I'm looking at some of my family in this webinar. I got a brother up in Wisconsin named Jim Drake. He wears overalls all the time. I gotta talk to him about that, okay? I, I, got, a, I got a sister named Linda Terzo down there in uh, Fort Myers, Florida, and, and uh, Dr. Deborah Colbert, and, and Judy O'Halloran. I, I got a really close brother, a little brother named Rick Bott over in Jacksonville, Florida. Amen. I got, I got a brother that's so close to me that I can't even believe how close we are. My best, best, best brother, Steve Whitman. Do, do you see what God did for me? And everybody I mentioned, they get me. They understand what God's doing in my life. And we need this is these are non-toxic people that I need okay amen amen we need the non-toxic people all right all right okay so I can't get my screens up here okay next slide okay here's the big I'm surprised some of you guys haven't asked this and there oh yeah then there's my I have daughters too Tara Jones is going, amen. She's my daughter from Memphis, okay? Um, I've just, she's just been, been part of my school and church in Memphis, Tennessee for years, has a tremendous prophetic gifting, and we've just been connected for years and years and years. She'll send me a really encouraging text every now and then. And as a matter of fact, I've got a lot of sons and a lot of daughters, and I've got lots of brothers and sisters. I've got so much family, okay? Amen. Um, now, it's not always possible, however, to remove yourself from a toxic relationship. Uh-oh. Because, <laughs> see, matter of fact, I was doing a little research on the Internet. They're saying, well, just cut them off. Just, just get rid of them. If they're toxic, cut, it, cut the strings right now. But, you know, what if they're your spouse? What if it's your family that you have to spend time with? What if it's your boss or your teacher? You see what I'm saying? So we're not always, wouldn't it be wonderful if we can just say, forget you, you're toxic. But that's not God's way. God says we're to love our enemies. I mean, I understand boundaries. We need to be around healthy people. But you know what? I have to be around some unhealthy people. And that's okay. And so do you. We all do. Let's get real here. Okay? So you, you can't just take an axe and, and cut every tie to every toxic person. Okay? Oh, yeah. <laughs> then Beth died. Don't forget your sister in Wisconsin, my sister Marsha. Amen. Amen. And Beth died, my comic relief sister. Yeah, I don't I don't pick on Beth Dye too much. She has too many emotions. She gets all emotional on me. I'm kind of worried about it. She hasn't been very emotional lately. That's a whole other topic. But what if you're with your spouse or what if your spouse happens to be toxic to you or a sister or a boss where you cannot get away from it. What do you do? What do you do? Well, there is something you can do, okay? There is something you can do. You may not be able to escape them. However, you realize you cannot change other people 
but you can change yourself. There's a very famous prayer that everybody knows, and the name of this prayer is the Serenity Prayer. Now, what does serenity mean? Serenity means peace, right? So there's a prayer that leads to peace, and the prayer says, Lord, help me. Was it, Lord, give me the wisdom. What is it? To change the things I can. Have the wisdom to accept what I cannot change. Okay? What is it? No, Lord, how's it go? Lord, help me to um, accept what I cannot change, change what I can, and give me the wisdom to know the difference. And what the prayer is saying, I know I, I, I botched up that prayer, but what the prayer is saying is when we can come to the place that there's some things that we cannot change, and there's some things we can change. And God gives you the wisdom to know what you can do, what you can't do. You will have peace. Well, one thing you cannot change and you don't have a right to change is other people. The big trap that I have done in my life is I wanted to fix toxic people. I didn't like the way the toxic person was making me feel, so I was determined to point out their faults. I was determined to make them understand their evil ways. I was determined to point out everything they were doing wrong because I was so Mr. Right. How do you think that worked? And Linda gave me the correct prayer here, by the way. Lord, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things that I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Okay? That's a very important prayer. Grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, change the things that I can, and wisdom to know the difference. So I used to botch up that prayer because I thought I could change toxic people. But the reason I wanted to change them, it wasn't because I was concerned about them. I didn't like the way they made me feel. Therefore, I thought they should change. And I thought that was a good enough reason to make them change. And you hear the word, make them change. So I became a controller because I was going to fix them because I knew what was best. And you can see right now, problem, 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 problem. Okay? All right. You cannot change other people, but you can change yourself. So what can you do? Okay? Here's the key thing. This, to me, is the most freeing thing. Knowing that you are not responsible in any way for another adult's words, thoughts, behavior can free you up. Okay? Uh, and Steve pointed out, to back it up a little bit, trying to change other people to a form of witchcraft called control. <laughs> and Steve had to mention that because I expected him to do that. This is very, very freeing, okay? Years ago, I mean, for many years, I worked in retail. If you've ever worked in retail, you come, against, you come up against all kinds of people. It's like an old Clint Eastwood movie. Remember the old Western, good, the good, the bad, and the ugly? Well, in retail, you, you, you'll run across good people. You'll have good people, bad people, and really ugly people. But I had this ability, even when a customer was in my face, calling me names, accusing me of all kinds of stuff, I had an ability to stay at peace. And I had this Jewish boss named Larry. I'll never forget Larry. One day, Larry came up to me, and he said, how do you not let this stuff get to you. And I said, well, it's, it's none of my business. That's their opinion. It's their words. It's their thoughts. It has nothing to do with me. And I, I learned to set that boundary. Boundaries are knowing where someone, someone ends and you begin. I didn't take ownership of somebody else's poison, so to speak. Let's, let's look at this. What does that look like? Okay. You see, you can separate yourself from any responsibility, guilt, or shame that tries to come from a toxic person. You may be married to somebody who can be toxic at times, okay? And when they offer you their garbage, you never, never take ownership of what does not belong to you. And if, and if they're offering you garbage in the form of condemnation, shame, guilt, blame, accusation, or projection, projecting their guilt upon you, they're handing you a load of garbage. And what most people do is they garbage is given to them. They grab hold of that garbage. They look at that garbage. They embrace that garbage. They smell that garbage. They analyze that garbage. They think about that garbage. They go to bed with that garbage. They wake up the next morning holding on to that garbage. Listen, that garbage doesn't belong to you. 
It's their stuff. Let them own it. You see, a toxic person may be spitting out poison, but you do not have to accept it. That's something you can control. You can control your reactions. You can control yourself, and you can know the truth. You're not responsible for their words. And you know what? There's little catchphrases I used to use. And, and these catchphrases work really well. Try this one when, they, when they're dumping their poison on you. You can say something like, you know, I'm sorry you feel that way. Now what that says is, I'm sorry you feel that way. If you think about that, what you're saying is, I don't take ownership of your stuff. I'm sorry that you feel that way. I'm sorry you have those words in your mind. I'm sorry you spoke that. I'm sorry you have this opinion of me. But see, that doesn't take any ownership at all. As a matter of fact, you're showing them a little compassion. It works very well. Jim and Marcia said it's hard when you get uh, spewed with garbage day in and day out by a spouse. It's been a long journey for me. Yeah, it is difficult. Marcia, you've been dumping. Oh, Marcia said it's not her. Okay, everybody, it's not Marcia. I know. Christy was doing this. Uh, Christy did this webinar, what, about a month ago about uh, why men cheat. And I kept going, it's not me, it's not me, it's not me. She kept talking about her spouse, you know, cheating and going, it's not me, it's not me. Okay. Um, Ellen says, for years after I was born again, I struggled to get my family to accept me and love Jesus. I no longer try to get their approval, but I give them to the Lord. Trying to be in a relationship with them is very draining and frustrating and I was losing my peace. Nothing is worth losing my peace. And that's a very good statement, Ellen. One of the key things to being in an unhealthy relationship and having peace, the serenity prayer, is the word expectations. One of the words, one of the problems we have that causes us difficulty is expectations. When you expect a toxic person who try who dumps garbage all the time not to dump garbage, your expectations are going to cause you a lot of pain. Watch your expectations, okay? Um, do, do you understand? When I was married before, um, I would say to my wife, I love you, honey. I was expecting her to say, I love you too, but she never did. And that hurt me a lot. And I expected her for years to say that she loved me, but she never did. One day, the bell went off saying, why don't I quit expecting that and I quit being hurt? So I quit expecting her to say it and I quit getting hurt. So if you just sort of, you know, I know we want people to do well, but if you drop your expectations, you will lower your pain level. Okay, in other words, I know we want to expect people to do nice things, expect people to say nice words, expect people to love us, expect people to do this, but some people you know from their history that they generally don't do that. So stop expecting it and you will not get hurt so bad, okay? And you, you can survive better, okay? Jesus said, you'll know them by their fruit, okay? Which means is we're not judging a person when we've observed their history. And if their history is they continually dump garbage on you, you can say they're toxic. And that's not labeling, that's not judging. All that is is they have the fruit of a toxic person. Therefore, I'm not going to expect a toxic person to do wonderful things for me. I'm going to turn that over to the Lord. And if someday they do something wonderful and nice, well, hallelujah, amen, it'll be a pleasant surprise. Okay? Amen. Never take ownership of something that doesn't belong to you. Allow the toxic person the freedom to own their own garbage, okay? So my question is, you know, whose garbage is that? Now, you may have some garbage that you have spilled on other people. I encourage you to take ownership of it. And by that, it's very simple. God requires each one of us to take ownership of our actions and our behavior. Not, I'm not responsible for Steve's behavior. I'm not, as much as I love Jim and Marsha, I'm not responsible for your behavior. And one thing I say all the time, and, and it always kind of trips people up, 
But what other people think of you is none of your business. It's none of your business. I mean, I want people to think nice things about me, but your thoughts belong to you. I don't control your mind. Your thoughts are your thoughts. My thoughts are my thoughts, okay? God said his thoughts were his thoughts. His thoughts were higher than our thoughts. So since I do not control your mind or own your mind, what you think is your business. It's none of my business. Now, I hope you think good things of me, and that's really nice if you do, but I don't take try to take ownership of your brain. And if you see what happens when you do that is you start letting other people control your life. And then you're totally controlled by what other people think. God says you cannot please man and God at the same time. Amen? That makes sense? I hope so. I'm not saying we don't care what other people... I care what you think. I am. I care that you think. You know, I care about your opinion. But I don't own it. I'm not responsible for your opinion. I'm responsible to be good. Ray Self, like tonight, my responsibility is to teach this lesson. Okay, if you like it, if you don't like it, if you hate it, if you love it, that's your responsibility, amen? But my responsibility is to teach this and do the best that I can, okay? Oh, God, Jim, Jim and Marsha love me anyway. That's so good, that's good. Amen. Thank you for that. You can care for and even have compassion on a toxic person without taking on their mess. And the reason I'm talking about this is I wish I could tell you you'll never be around a toxic person, okay? You'll never be around a toxic person in your whole life. You know that's not true. You've already been around many of them, and you'll probably have many more, okay? But you know what you can do is have a little compassion. I found out some years ago that when I started having compassion on people who were hurting me, it kind of helped me get free. In other words, instead of taking it personally, I started feeling sorry for them. And when I did that, and I prayed for them, and that seemed to really help me. You know, I can't exactly say why, but maybe some of you can relate to that, okay? But it does help you, okay? Have compassion, have mercy. Were you forgiving them for hurting you? Yeah, you know, I forgive people, but my view, you know, hurt people do hurt people, that's true. My view of hurting, of forgiveness is very simple. When God says forgive those who, who hurt you, what he's saying is vengeance belongs to the Lord. So forgiveness means if, if Jim picks up a rock one day, well, he lives up in Wisconsin, if he picks up a snowball and throws it at me, okay, I can forgive him by not picking up the snowball and throwing it back. Forgiveness means you do not repay, okay? You don't hold it against them. Forgiveness does not mean you enjoyed it, you liked it, you appreciated it, or you cared about it. I think people get confused. Well, if I forgive you, that means I'm approving of what you did. No, it's not. It just means I'm not taking vengeance upon you. I'm not going to punish you. I'm going to let God take care of whatever you need. Okay? Amen. All right. Our reaction to the toxic person is our responsibility. Now, here is what you can do. Okay. So, go back to the serenity prayer. Okay. The serenity prayer, which, you know, Linda put up, which I, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. Well, I can't change them. Give me the courage to change what I can and the wisdom to know the difference. Well, what can I change in a toxic relationship? I can change me. I can change how I react to them. I can, I can get in my mind, you know what? Whatever they say is their business, it's not mine. Their opinion is their opinion. I'll let them keep their opinion or own their own opinion. Their trash is their trash, it's not my trash. That, and I can, I can get a healthy attitude. I can set boundaries. Now, realistically, what I've had to do in my life with toxic people, when I can, I will limit my time with them if that's possible. Sometimes uh, it is not possible but just being practical until we get that perfect healthiness about us, 
um, you know, until we're fully mature, which none of us are that mature, we can limit our exposure. It's like going out in the sun in Florida. Um, you know, if you're out in the sun, in central Florida where I live, if you're out in the sun for more than 20 minutes without sunblock, you get sunburned. So how do you keep from getting sunburned? You limit your exposure to the sun. So one thing you can do is limit your exposure. Now, if you cannot limit your exposure to them, it's very important you practice healthy reactions and you know you have a healthy self-esteem and healthy boundaries, okay? Uh, Tara said, the sad thing about toxic relationships is they can cause bitterness, unforgiveness, and hatred. You see, good point, Tara. Because see, our responsibility, if a toxic relationship <laughs> is causing bitterness or hatred or unforgiveness in us, that's our responsibility. Now, we've got a responsibility to deal with the bitterness, deal with the resentment, deal with the hatred. You understand? You can do something about that because that's in you. That's something going on with you. What the other person did, you can't, have, you can't do anything about it. But if you are, because of a toxic relationship, bitter or resentful, honestly, you can ask the Holy Spirit to come and to give you strength to release it. You can repent for your bitterness. You can make a choice by, by will, by an act of your will. You can say, Lord, I forgive this person for hurting me. I don't like what they did, Lord, but I forgive them. I ask you, Lord, I just put them in your hands, Lord. I'm moving on now. I'm putting this behind me. I'm moving on. Okay? Amen. Forgiveness and compassion do not mean approval. That's what we're kind of working toward here, okay? Forgiveness means you do not take vengeance and you have set yourself free. You see, if I have unforgiveness, say, toward my friend Steve, if I have not forgiven him for something, what that does is that links me to him and there is an unholy bond there. See, unforgiveness ties you to the person who hurts you. You want to forgive not for their benefit. You forgive for your benefit. Plus, Scripture says very clearly, if we do not forgive, we will not be forgiven. Amen? Compassion means you have concern for the other person. Okay? So what, I, what I'm saying is a proper reaction to a toxic person is forgiveness and compassion. Okay? It means I'm not going to pay them back. I'm not going to throw more. I'm not going to throw garbage back at them. And you know what? And I'm going to have compassion because they're hurt. They've got issues. They've got self-esteem issues. Um, they need healing. They need the Lord. Okay? It, it, it's sad. They're in a lot of pain themselves. Probably a tremendous amount of pain. That's why they're taking it out on you. Toxic people take up a lot of our time, energy, and focus. One thing you can do is what can you do? You can make a healthy choice to put our focus. We can make a healthy choice to put our focus in time where it should be. Whatever you focus on will control you. Okay? Choose today what you're going to focus on. Toxic people tend to demand or get an inordinate amount of attention. One thing you can do, back to the serenity prayer, God help me, give me what? Courage to change the things that I can. One thing you can change is how much time you spend thinking about the toxic person. How much time you wring your hands and worry about the toxic person. Okay? See, right now I'm focused on this webinar. And this webinar is controlling me. Amen? It is because I'm focused on it. And if I'm focused on a problem, the problem is controlling me. If I'm focused on a bad relationship, the bad relationship is controlling me. If I'm focused on God and the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ, then God, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus Christ are controlling me. Guess who wants to be in control? Hello? God. Amen? Amen. 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 
God wants our attention. Okay. You remember, um, I think Pastor Bob mentioned this uh, one one of his his class moving a block. It's just a transformation. As a parent, we'll we'll sometimes we'll look at our children and we'll go, "Look at me, look at me, look at me when I'm talking to you." Maybe that was Joe Warner last Sunday at the church. But look at me when I'm talking to you. You know what God God is saying to us tonight? Hey. Hey, guys, quit looking at them. Look at me. I'm trying to talk to you. Look at me. Give me your attention, please. Turn off that TV. Put it, turn off your laptop. Get away from Facebook for a few minutes, will you? I need your attention. That's a cure for toxic relationships. You choose to focus on him, and you'll have peace no matter what. No matter what the situation because you see there's an incredible promise in scripture be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God which surpasses all comprehension will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus you see right now some of us need to pray this prayer Lord I thank you Father for who you are I thank you for my life I thank you, Father, I'm in a situation, but Lord, I praise you in the middle of this situation. And Lord, this situation is toxic. I'm in a toxic relationship, but Lord, I thank you. Lord, I praise you. And Lord, I make a request to you. I ask you to heal this person in my life who who has such venom in their words. I ask you to touch them with your Holy Spirit, Father. I ask you to, to save them, Father. Fill them with your Spirit. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, I ask you to to get the devil out of their minds and out of their spirits. Lord, I give you this relationship. Lord, I trust you with this. I thank you now, Lord. I give this burden to you completely. I thank you, Father, for your peace that passes all understanding. Amen. 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 You see, (laughs) we're witnesses of these things, and so is the Holy Spirit. 